the Catos are uh, far from being strangers to Bible Baptists, and I don't know if we can even consider them visitors anymore, but it's great to have them here tonight and uh, look forward to hearing uh, from them. So, Brother Cato, come on ahead. Got turned green, right? Is it okay, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. I don't know why they have standby on these things. But, uh, yeah, we, uh, I'd like to just go ahead and get into the video because I'm one of those, like a lot of people, I'm not at a loss. I usually don't run out of things to say, and I don't know when to stop, so. And I'm from Alabama, so it takes me a while to. <laughs> so uh, we'll just go ahead and get into uh, the video and let it, uh, to speak for our ministry, I would like to say that to thank this church has uh, had a big part in our lives. Of course, we started coming here visiting when our kids were little, and now they're all married. Praise the Lord! Last one got married about a week ago. So, and and so this church has a special place in our hearts. We appreciate you folks and and uh, what you do for the Lord and and the part you've had in our ministry in prayers and also financial support. Uh, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and get into the video, and I'll say some more about our ministry after the video. Thank you. 
keep us uh, keep the ministry there in your prayers, please. Um, right now, uh, Todd and Sarah are down there holding holding down the fort and uh, uh, our home, all the animals and the ministry there. And Todd is studying the language, so please pray, pray for them. And we just found out, of, uh, I think, two weeks ago that uh, Sarah is pregnant. We're going to have our first uh, grandkid. So, so we're, we're looking forward to that. And um, she's, she's uh, been sick every day. She's going to the hospital, extreme, real hard uh, morning sickness. Us guys have, don't have a clue about that, but I hear it's pretty bad. She's, uh, it seems bad. She's just really, and so pray, pray, please pray for her as she goes through this. And uh, on top of that, you know, with the, with the, the responsibilities they have, uh, they they are only at about fifty percent of their support. They went down to, to you know get some experience, stay down there for a year, and allow us to come back for furlough also, and our daughter's our other daughter's wedding. And Corey and Lori, my other uh, daughter and son-in-law. They're on a deputation right now. They had been down there for a year uh, prior to, to them. So please pray pray for them and, and uh, the, the ministry down there. The Lord will bless them and allow them to start church. It's, it's very, very hard work. Uh, and and uh, they're mostly Catholic and very self-righteous. Just to give you an idea how the people there think, they never, ever say, I'm sorry. If you hear one say you're sorry, I'm sorry, or I was wrong, they don't. It's not in their nature. I mean, they don't do things wrong. Even if you, hey, look here, this, I, I could give you examples. It's just they're very uh, self-righteous, lost, and uh, on their way to hell. But uh, good people, they think they're good. Of course, they're steeped in sin, uh, like many people are uh, self-righteous people. But I know that. Uh, God, that God can break their hearts, so please pray for the ministry down there and our, our kids to get their uh, support. Uh, Corey and Lori, about 75% of their support, so please uh, pray for them. All right, let's uh, get into the message here. Uh, if you would stand, please, and look in the book of Numbers, chapter 16. Numbers. Chapter 16, starting with verse 41. Number 16, chapter 16, starting with verse 41 through 50. But on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, Ye have killed the people of the Lord. And it came to pass, when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron, that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation, and behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation, that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer, and put fire therein from off the altar, and put on incense, and go quickly unto the congregation, and make an atonement for them. For as there is no wrath gone out from the Lord, the plague is begun. And Aaron took as Moses commanded, and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun, begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living. And the plague was stayed. Now they that died in the plague were 14,700, beside them that died about the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned unto Moses unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the plague was stayed. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to meet here tonight, Father. And uh, I don't take it lightly. This is your business, and it's important. God, touch our hearts tonight. Help us, Lord. Encourage us. Challenge us to do your work that you've called us to do, Father. That's why you left us here. God help us. Bless the message and bless the hearers. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. You know, have you ever, have you ever uh, 
done a what if. You know, what if this had happened? Or what if uh, that had happened? Or what if we had left the door open or whatever? I'll give an example. One time I was in uh, Oklahoma City, and we were staying in a mission apartment in kind of a bad area, okay? I mean, the people selling drugs across the street, just a really bad area, okay? Uh, and uh, one evening I, I uh, had to leave. I took off from so, to somewhere I forget. It was years ago. And when I left, my, my, uh, later on my wife called me and told me what happened. She said it was in the evening, getting dark, or was dark. And when I left, she said, when I left, somebody came and tried to open the door to the house. They didn't knock. They just tried to open the door. But the door was locked. Amen? You, you, you folks in Columbus probably lock your doors. <laughs> if you don't, you should start. Amen? And then, what if I had not locked that door? What if? What were their intentions? I'm sure it wasn't good. My wife at home by herself. As soon as I left, they saw me leave. Now, she was sitting there uh, reading her Bible or, or, or doing something, I don't know. And she had a 38 pistol with her, okay? So, it's probably a good thing they didn't come in that door. You know what I'm talking about? But what if she didn't have a gun? And what if? door was not locked. I mean, I mean, we can watch, and we do that sometimes. It's just human nature. What if this, or what if we'd have been there? We, you know, uh, maybe we'd have found that money instead of the other person. No, no just any, anything. You, know, you, you can just go on and on and on. What if? And I, and I was thinking about that. Uh, and I was reading these verses, and I saw this, uh, you know, uh, when God was killing the people there, of course, he had killed Korah and the other people. And I thought, what if? What if Moses wasn't in contact with God when that happened? What if they, they said to take a censor? What if, what if, if he couldn't find Aaron? We need to find Aaron because people are dying left and right. And he needs to take that censor and put fire therein and go forth between the living and the dead. What if? One time, uh, down in Brazil, uh, we went to this area called Santa Maria, uh, Rio Grande do Sul, uh, years ago. And we found out after we got there that three missionary families, independent, fundamental Baptist, King James only, amen, like we are, had gone to that same area and tried to start a church. Three families, a team. One veteran missionary and two uh, younger uh, first-time missionaries. They went to that city, and we found out, because when we were living there, they said the missionaries lived right over there, right where, next to where we were renting. And, they, and, and the, uh, two of the missionary families quit in less than a year. They said, we can't take it. The culture, the shock, you know, you can't talk to anybody hardly. The, and even if you can, the, you can't, it's hard to get in with the people. And, 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 and they, they just quit. The, the veteran missionary family, I won't say his name because he's actually a pastor today. He's retired, I believe. He stayed another year. And within two years, these, all these missionaries quit being missionaries. Now can you imagine all the money that it took to get these three missionaries on the mission field? Can you imagine the hours and hours and hours of on the phone calling to get meetings, uh, deputation, uh, the, the traveling hundreds and thousands and thousands of miles and the wear and tear on the cars to get these three missionary families to the field. So that they could tell people about Christ, so that they could start a church. Could you imagine 
It's a lot. Thousands upon thousands of dollars of churches like this, good churches. And I'm not talking bad, don't get me wrong, I'm not talking bad about these missionaries, no. I believe that they really wanted to serve God. I believe that they had a heart and they, and they, and they said, oh, God's going to use us and God's called us to be missionaries. I know the one, he's a, he's a pastor, a good, good preacher actually. But, uh, but I, I'm sure that their heart was in the right place and so forth, but uh, all that went in, and they went down there, and they tried. No church. I don't know if anybody got saved. I don't know. No, maybe their heart wasn't. Let me preach, okay? Okay, now, so, and, and, and ended up quitting and going home. Didn't you think? And we went to the same place. And I'm thinking, oh man, wow. <laughs> so we're here. I, and, I'm no, and I'm no better than them, folks. No, no way. Oh, oh, he's a great person. No, no, no. And when we found out about it, I told my wife, I said, wow, wow, you know, we're in the same area and they couldn't hack it. But, but I, I'll be honest with you. But I, I'm, I'm from Alabama. We'll make it. Amen. <laughs> Alabama folks are tough. Got God on. Hey, Amen. I'm different. I'm a tough missionary. So I told some people, and I'm ashamed of this. I, I actually told people, within a year, we're going to have a church, brother. Brother, brother Yoder, I told people. That. Within a year, we're going to have a church. I'm different than them people. We work hard. We handed out thousands of gospel tracts. We knocked on doors. We witnessed to people. I did everything but choke them. Get saved. <laughs> Man, we rented a building. We had a team of, of men come down from the Bible college. One of them ended up marrying one of my daughters, uh, Corey. <laughs> and, and, and we went out, and we worked hard. We had Bible clubs. We had a vacation Bible school. My, my wife had uh, um, uh, meetings with the children. We even had a group, and, and we worked hard. We had a group of kids coming, and, and, and I think up to maybe 20, 30 kids coming in the neighborhood, and, and the Pentecostal church started uh, meeting at the same time, started a Bible club, and they started offering hot dogs and hamburgers and cake and stole all our kids. I'd had to give pizza and steak to keep them. You know what I mean? So, and we, we worked hard. And I'm going to tell you something. At the end of one year, we didn't have a church. We didn't have anybody. Maybe, you know, we had a few confessions of faith. You know, people, I hope they got saved, amen, but nothing like to come to church and serve God and stay there. Nothing. Wow. Three missionary families. Went down there. I believe they probably tried hard too, Brother Yoder. I'm, I'm, they probably did. I mean, they went to all that trouble to get down there. I don't know, but they probably tried. I know I tried hard. And I know I've started churches before. And I preached the gospel. Nothing after one year. My wife says, what are we going to do? I said, well... We're just going to keep on going. We're just going to keep on going. Because God called us here to preach the gospel. God's the one that starts the church anyway. I sure can't. That's for sure. I can prove that. Amen. <laughs> so we just kept going. We kept soul winning. Kept telling people about Jesus. Kept giving out gospel tracts. Preaching the gospel. And one day. My wife, thank God for a, a faithful wife. My wife and my daughter, who I believe it's Sarah, I don't remember who it was, or Lori, they, they were out visiting. Now, where was I? I don't know. Maybe I was at home eating ice cream. I don't know. But anyway, I, I, is it too? But they just happened to be out vi uh, visiting and, uh, together. And uh, they came upon a house, and the woman was a, a school teacher at the 
public school there. And she asked my wife, she said, why don't you come to the public school and teach the children the Bible? I think I can get you in. So, of course, amen, we'll do it. My wife went, and my daughters, they wouldn't let me go. They didn't even want a preacher man there, you know. It, it was a woman principal. You know how that goes. It, it scared me. Let me go. I want to talk to them. I want to preach those kids. No, they wouldn't let me. But my wife could and, and my daughter. And they went there twice a week teaching the Bible to those elementary kids and up to high school kids. And so, uh, They did a lot of work. Well, they kept preaching the gospel, and some of those kids started to get saved. And then some of those teenagers started to get saved. Amen? And so we decided, let's go start a church in that area with those kids and those teenagers. Because we tried to start a church here, best we could, couldn't get it going. Since these people are getting saved, amen, it's better to start a church with saved people. I, I, don't you agree, amen? So since these people are getting saved, let's go start a church there. So we went to that area. It was uh, kind of poor area, but not super poor, but, you know, lower income area. And, and uh um, the thing, the thing is, there was no place to meet. So we started meeting in an open field. For three months, we met in an open field. Every Sunday morning, we'd bring some, maybe some donuts or something and some coffee or whatever, and we'd put out the little plastic chairs and everything. We started meeting, and people started coming. And we even had a day, I think we had over 100 people, 150 people show up. We had a day where we played volleyball and football, American football, you know, teach me. And, and I preached on the loudspeaker and, and so forth. And, and it was great. And folks started getting saved. And, uh, so, and, but it started getting, uh, w uh, towards wintertime, it started getting a little bit cold and rainy. So I thought, well, you know, I, I, we, have, we need to find a place to meet. Church is the people. Not the building, but still, it's, not, it's, it's, it's nice to have a place to meet with the people, amen? So I got a mold, uh, 1994 uh, Yamaha 600 motorcycle, and, and, and I started going down the road on that thing, putting real slow. Look, I said, I'm going to go down every street and look at every house until I find a place to meet. I started going down this street real slow. The first street I got to, I started going down the hill, and I looked up, and there was a big two-story building. And the bottom looked like it was empty. And I, and I got off my motorcycle and started looking around at it like this. All of a sudden, a man came out of the top part of the building, and he said, I'm sorry, but we're closed. We closed This store closed about two months ago. Amen. Amen. <laughs> what I'm looking for. And you know what he said? He said, uh, yeah, my wife and I were talking the other day. He didn't know me. He didn't know who it was. He said, my wife and I were talking the other day, and we was talking about we might even try to rent it to a church or something. Amen. So, make a long story short, because, you know, he ended up getting saved. His wife got saved. His kids got saved. His brothers got saved. His sisters got saved. His mom, and, uh, mom got saved. He didn't have a dad's death. And, 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 and they started witnessing their neighbors, and they started, and they started winning people to Christ. And, and oh, Giovanni's his name. Oh, Giovanni. That guy, man, he had a testimony like you wouldn't believe. He was two years in the spiritism, and he, he would uh, regularly be possessed by demons. It's some kind of testimony. Wow. Uh, in fact, he said the very first service we had, he, w he didn't attend, but his son did. He was being attacked by demons. When his son went upstairs, he was trying to throw himself off and kill himself. And his son wouldn't let him. They, I forget what they call it in Portuguese. It means incorporate, uh, uh, possess, yeah. But, uh, uh, but he got saved, and man, he's preaching deacon, you know. And he, got, and he, he even started going around doing Bible studies and winning people to the Lord. I showed him how to do that. And we trained him and his wife. His little, his little wife, uh, about that tall, she was one of the shortest people I ever met, man, I tell you. One time, one time I accidentally patted her on the head when she came in church. I said, oh, I'm sorry. I thought she was a... I thought she was a kid, but she, and she was so shy. And, she, and, and Diane said, I need to train a Sunday school teacher. I said, uh, um, I'm going to get uh, uh, Giovanni's wife. What was her name? Uh, Giovanni's wife. And I said, uh, 
I said, you, she can't be a Sunday school teacher. Look at her. She's scared of her shadow. Yeah. And she said, no, I'm going to train her. I want to tell you something. Diane trained that lady. And she's one of the best Sunday school teachers I've ever seen. That lady, she just filled that room up with little kids, man. She'd go out visiting. and Man, she she preaching the gospel to them. And I said, oh, faith. What they and, and the church and the church went. I'm, I'm not any better than those, but I'm gonna tell you something, folks. What if? What if we had quit after one year? What if they had stayed? What about you? What about you? That's just that's just introduction. But don't worry, my introduction is real long, and and my preaching is about this big. So don't worry about that. It's about as long as my preaching there. But, uh, you know, what if? What if we weren't faithful in going out? What if we would have stayed home? What if Diane hadn't gone out that day? What if she hadn't met that lady? What if the, we hadn't went by faith and started meeting in an open field? Because hardly anybody does that anymore for sure. What if? We just said it can't be done. What if? What if? And you can go on and on with what if. I just want to look at some things very quickly uh, about the, 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 the story here with uh, Moses and Aaron. Uh, for one thing, the multitude was against them. In verse 41, it says, uh, But on the morrow all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, Ye have killed the people of the Lord. They murmured. They were against them. I'm going to tell you something. You're not going to be the most popular person on the street or in your family if you serve God. People are going to think you're weird. I remember when, when we were, uh, uh, what if? What if we would have bent the pressure of my family? I remember when I was called to preach, uh, and, and I told my dad I was going to be a missionary. He called me a fool. He said, you don't even have enough money to go across town, much less around the world. I thought, well, he's right. You know, I didn't have any money. I was broke. But I said, but Dad, God's called me to be a missionary. I'm going to be a missionary. And, and, and it, it, people are going to hate you. People are going to make fun of you. Uh, the Bible says in John chapter 15, verse 18, that the world hate you. You know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. What if, oh, Moses and uh, Aaron, they looked out at the crowd that was all mad. What if they gave in to them? What if they quit because it was too hard? Man, can you imagine the pressure and the stress that was on Moses? What if they'd have quit? And why would they want to help people that were against them anyway? Wow. Down in Brazil, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to talk bad about Brazilian because people are people. Everybody's bad. Everybody. But I'm going to tell you, it's different down there. When I came back to the States, I have more culture shock when I come back here because I'm going walking in Walmart and people are walking, I'm not kidding you, this far away. And they're saying, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You didn't do anything. We come out. I'm sorry. Because they, you get close to them or something. I'm sorry. Sorry for what? A Brazilian will run into you. Bam! And they won't even say anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not exaggerating. They're like, bam! And they're, they're just looking at me. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, why are people so nice? And I'm from the South. I thought I, I always thought Yankees were mean, you know. They're nice as people. <laughs> I told, I said, man, are we down south? These people are nice, you know. You, you go, you go, you go to, to get a parking space, and all of a sudden a, a person comes up, and you're about the same time, and they go, oh, you go ahead. Like, what? In Brazil, it's like, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, and self-righteous, and, and, and talk bad about America, jealous and envy. How would I want these people to get saved? Sometimes it's not easy to love people, is it? And they're the ones that are going to be the meanest to you. And here you are trying to help them. Tell them about Jesus. Amen. I mean, look at the way they were treating Moses, uh, treating Moses, talking bad about him until God, the wrath of God fell. And guess who helped them? Amen. 
We're the only ones that can help, the ones that have the gospel. Another, another thing, very quick, quickly here, verse 44. It said, and the, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, God spoke. Folks, that is the answer. That is always the answer. Hebrews chapter, it doesn't matter. In the end, it doesn't matter what you say, what I think, you think, what people say, what they don't, what we say. And that's, that's what we kept doing. We kept preaching the gospel down there. Okay. That's what happens when you get technology. I lost my sermon here. Back. Okay, God spoke. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God it was speaking then and God is still speaking today and we better be listening. What if they were not listening? What if they were too busy to hear what God had to say? What if they had decided to change God's word? Today there's people changing God's word. I don't know about you, but I, I just believe God's word. Uh, God was angry. And they knew it. And God is still angry today. I don't know, a lot of, a lot of stuff's going on. Y'all might not know about it because y'all are in a good church. But there's a lot of churches out there. God is love. God is love. Yeah, God is love. But the Bible also talks about an angry God. The wrath of God. You know what? I, can't, I, can't, I lost my train of thought there. I'll just blame it on y'all. Amen. Y'all listen better. Amen. Uh, I remember I visited a church because as a missionary we get into all kinds of churches. I try to stay in, in uh, good fundamental churches, but sometimes we end up in some different kinds of churches. And, and I was in a church one time and uh, in the Sunday school class. And I'm going to tell you, folks, I was in shock. I mean, the Sunday school teacher read some verses out of the Bible and, and, and then said every time she'd read a verse, she would read verse. Right there's a problem, I think. But anyway, uh, for me, anyway. And, and she would, and, and then, what do you think? What do you think? And everybody started going around the room telling what they thought. And I was just like, what in the world? And some crazy stuff. Even one person trying to uh, teach some heresy. And, and finally they got around to me. What does the missionary think? And I said, well, I think it means what it says. That's what I think. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord. And I kind of like started preaching a little bit. And you know what? This wasn't, uh, this was a, a, a friend of mine that had invited me actually to this church. And I, I'm kind of, uh, uh, and it wasn't exactly a Baptist church. And uh, you know what the teacher said? Oh, he's a Baptist. What does that say? Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> hey, I sure am. I believe the Bible. Amen. Come on now. I wish they'd let me preach the whole service there, but uh, you know what? The Bible says, oh, that's my next point. I'm going to help myself. Okay, God spoke, and guess what? God was angry. In verse 45, in verse 46. Get you up from among this congregation that I may consume them as in a moment and they fell upon their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, take a censer and put fire therein from off the altar and put on incense and go quickly unto the congregation and make an atonement for them for there is wrath gone out from the Lord and the plague is begun. Guess what? The plague has begun. God was angry and began to kill people, consume them with his anger. Folks, it's happening today. There's a plague going on. It's called sin. And people that die without Christ will go to a burning hell and burn for all eternity. It 
in, in John chapter 3, verse 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. And death, and in Revelation chapter 20, verse 14, 15, Death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever is not found written in the book of life, life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, what if they had downplayed the wrath of God? Oh, don't worry. I wonder if we ever do that. I know I have. I'm ashamed of it, but I have. I think we all have. Not serious as we should. I remember one time when I was single, I went to a, a, a nursing home. I went to a church, visited a church, and we went had a nursing home ministry. And I went to the nursing home, and there was a, a, an elderly lady sitting there, very, very elderly, very old. And uh, I'm not talking bad about old people because I'm, I'm getting there, there. We all get there one day, man. But uh, she was sitting there, you know, like very old. And she, and she was there with these little plastic beads. You know what I mean? Going like this. And I saw that. And, and it, just, it, it, it just burned my heart. That lady sitting there doing that with the beads, trusting in that religion, trusting in those beads. And I walked up to her and I said, ma'am. I said, those beads can't save you. Your re religion can't save you. Only Jesus Christ that died for our sin can save you. I said, you can't. Your religion can't save you. Only Christ. And she began to shake, like, kind of like freaking out, you know, like, like very troubled. Very. And she's an elderly lady. And about that time, a big old deacon came up and grabbed me by the arm. You quit bothering her. A deacon of the Independent Fundamental Baptist Church. You quit bothering her. Big guy, too. I might could have whooped him. I don't know. But he's a big fella. And I looked at him, and I said, Don't you think she's going to be just a little bit more bothered when she goes to hell? Leave her alone. Let her die in peace in her religion. If that were the case, we I wouldn't even be, I would have never went to Brazil. They're very religious people. They believe in God. They believe in a Jesus. They're lost and on their way to hell. And after that, in verse 46, verse 47, also, and God began to kill the people. Because of their sin. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, uh, that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, Romans 6, 23. Can somebody quote that for me? I knew that. Amen. The wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. People are going to die. God's going to kill them. One time I talked to this guy down in Brazil. He's about 70-something years old. I don't know what I got about aggravating uh, older folks. I shouldn't be doing that, right? And he, he's about 75 years old, and, and, and I found out that he was actually in, in Hitler's army. Yeah. His name was George. He's down there in Brazil, and he's one of those guys that escaped and went down there. I, I figured that out after talking to him. You know. and, and he was telling me that he drove one of the trucks that would take the Jews to the, the camps. The Holocaust to kill them. And I started trying to witness to him. He, he said he was an atheist. And, went, and he got very angry with me. Big fella. But he, he said, don't you talk to me about God. You know, and we're speaking in Portuguese. Been down there for a long time. And, and he said, you don't you talk to me about God. And I said, look, George, you need to hear because you don't have much time left, man. Look at you. You got one foot in the grave. Bad hell. You didn't have much time left. I said, you need to hear it. I care about you. Because I care about you, I want you to tell you, man, about Jesus. Sometimes people only tell the good stories when people get saved, right? He said, don't you tell me about God. He said, how come God didn't help those Jewish people? How come I saw men, women, and children by the thousands being taken off to the, the death. 
He said, don't you, why didn't God help them? I said, George, now I understand that you're angry with God because you would participate. That guilt, must, you could imagine the guilt he had of participating in that. And he said, and I said, so let me get this right. You're angry because God let those people die. I got news for you. God kills everybody. You ever thought about that? Everybody here? And everybody out there? That's right. You get mad at God because somebody dies? Why did God take my son? Why did God take my daughter? I got news for you. You're going to. And your other brother and your other sister and your other kids. The wages of sin is death. Wages of sin is death. And God was killing those people. And God's still killing people today. We always hear God's love, God's love. Yes, He is love. But if, if a person does not accept Christ, they have they die and then they have a second death in hell where their souls cast into hell. Now, I'm talking about you, I'm talking about your children, I'm talking about your neighbors, I'm talking about all those people down in Brazil, blooming out, 330,000 people, every single one of them. Everybody in Columbus, everybody in your family, everybody in their family, everybody that has a cousin or a mom and dad or is a mom and dad is under this curse. The wages of sin is death. Now, but we, what if? But what if we stand between the living and the dead? You ever think about that? What if we decide to do something about it? What if we decide to say, Uncle, Aunt, I know you've been going to this church all your life, but it cannot save your soul. Jesus died on the cross for your sin. He loves you. Here's a gospel track. Please read it. Please think about it. For Jesus loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Wow. What if we do that? What if we stand between? What if? We stand between the living and the dead. What if? What if it was your family? Many years ago, and I think I've told, and I'm almost finished, so don't worry if some of you want to get out right now. But many years ago, I, probably, I think I've even told this, I'm pretty sure I've told this here before, but I'm going to tell it again. So I was preaching in a church. I think they had about 100 people there at the church uh, that morning, and a bunch of visitors came, and I was going to preach on something, and I'm, I'm like that. I'm kind of spontaneous sometimes. And, and I just felt God had burdened my heart to preach a different uh, message that morning. Instead of preaching my prepared sermon, though, the, the, all the notes there, I preached on John chapter 3, verse 16. Just, just like that. Well, I've read it many times. I've thought about it. For God. And then I went to that point. That's the first one. For so loved. I went through that. For God so, and I preached that sermon that morning for uh, John chapter 3, verse 16. Just a simple gospel message of salvation. Because I figured of 100 people and some visitors that somebody uh, was lost and, and would get saved that morning. And I preached, and I, and, and I believe God was on a sermon, and I preached with my heart. And, and when I gave the invitation, I thought, man, we're going to have a bunch of people get saved. I thought, you know, us preachers, we like to think that. Amen. Nothing, nothing. And, and boy, I just thought a bunch of people going to come down. And, and, and kind of like in Brazil, you know, I gave the invitation, and nobody stirred. Like, is anybody here that like to get saved? Raise your hand. Nobody raised their hand. I thought, y'all are lying. I said, y'all are lying. Somebody out there is lost need to get saved. You know, I said, I said, man, is there anybody here that would like to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior? And all of a sudden, a little bitty arm went up, a little bitty hand, a little bitty child, a five-year-old girl. And y'all know who that five-year-old girl is. She's a missionary today. Lori Beth Cato. Lori Beth Myers today. 
Five years old, my little daughter got saved. What if I had not preached the gospel that morning? What if I, my little daughter wasn't raised in a Christian home and under preaching to the word of God? What if we hadn't raised her the way that we did? What if? What if? What if you hadn't come to church tonight? What if? What if we decide that we're not going to quit even when the quitting seems the right the thing to do? And we keep going and going and going and preaching and witnessing and praying and being faithful in church and serving God. And the last point, he stood between the living and the dead. What if he had been offended that day and quit? What if Moses would have said, I'm fed up with y'all. Let God kill them all. What if he had hurt his big toe? What if he had been lazy that day? What if no one would remember his name? Wow. Do we only do things for God when we get recognition? What if? What if no one called on him to pray? What if there was just one person out there when he went to witness to him? What if it's just a little kid? Little children are watching us. What if it was difficult? What if Diane and I had quit on the mission field? What if she had decided to go shopping instead of soul winning? What if we had decided to watch baseball or football instead of keep going? What if? What if churches like this had not been praying for us? What if churches did not? What if the people hadn't given? And what if the churches hadn't sent their support? And we'd have had to come home because of lack of funds? What if? Folks, there's more Giovannis out there. There's people right now where only you and I can make a difference. In Brazil, other mission fields, in the United States, there's somebody out there that only you can reach. They won't listen to anybody else. Or they might have not have contact with anybody else. What if? What if? All right, let's pray. Father, I thank you for loving us, Lord, and I thank you for this church, Bible Baptist Church. God, help us all, Lord. I, I know that... We all fail. Nobody's perfect. God, I pray that this evening that we just uh, decide to try to do a little bit more. We're not, believe, we don't believe in works or work salvation. But what if we do our part trying to serve you and obeying you in every area of our lives? Father, please help. Help, uh, help us as missionaries, Lord, because it's not over. I believe if, unless you take me home, Lord, I have many years left to serve you, and I want to serve you wherever, whenever, as much as I can. God, help us all, Lord, to be like Moses and Aaron and be, in will and be willing to stand between the living and the dead. Give out the gospel while we can and be available.